Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, today we're gonna to be taking a look at this. From Lugu Lake, this is a modern, obviously, it's brand new, phonograph slash gramophone that looks antique, but it's obviously modern built. So this ought to be really, really cool. I know very little about this other than you know the basic appearance. It's gonna have the big horn, all that good stuff, but it's gonna have a lot of modern stuff as well. So I'm curious how this performs, you know, playing a 78 compared to the old Vidanola phonographs. So we'll have to check that out. You're definitely not gonna to wanna to miss this. This box is pretty massive, but honestly, it doesn't weigh a lot. So, interested to see how this goes together. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of plastic, but at the same time, it's very unique. I mean, it's not like there's a lot of companies doing this, so I'm curious what it's going to be like. Oh, cool. So, it looks like it's got retail packaging. Oh, that's weird. Look at that. The tape has gone yellow. I wonder if that means it's been on the store shelves for a long time or in the stock room for a long time, but I love retail packaging because I like to see the marketing that they apply to different products. Wow, this thing is like vacuum sealed in here. So as you can see, this uh, retail packaging is great. It's got a lot of informative information on it. Tells us a lot about the product, great product photos. So yeah, very good. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and cut this open. It's really weird how this tape is yellowed. So far this whole thing is kind of weird because <laughs> of the white box, the yellow tape. Maybe it's not as new as I thought it was. All right. Lugu Lake has done some really interesting things. I believe they're the company that had that super high gloss piano finish turntable we reviewed. And styrofoam blocking. So, I think I'm gonna turn this on its end. I have to say, so far it's very well packed. Anyway. Ooh, smells like varnish. Lift this off. We might actually get to see what it looks like here for a change. Cool. Okay, now we're getting someplace. Look at this. Let me tilt it up so you can see it. So we got the phonograph base. We've got the horn. Yes. All right, let's go ahead and unbox these individual components. So we have the horn. Wow. Okay, that's actually heavier than I thought. It's like definitely metal. It's awesome. Here's the platter. Oh, that's cool. I like how they have like this antique design on it. That's really neat. And then on the back, there's instructions. Plastic platter. That's cool. Wow, it's got a remote. <laughs> That's awesome. Some accessories, remote control, and then the main unit itself. Okay. Power supply. Wow. You guys, I have to say, I'm actually, I'm getting really excited now because this is really starting to feel like something substantial. Look at that. That is cool. All right, let's uh, set it up in a different angle and take another look. Okay, it looks like this foam block was support, supposed to support this tone arm because now we got the needle touching the uh, device directly, which isn't great, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Plus, those are a dime a dozen, those replacement styli, so we can replace it if needed. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and put it together. Nothing better than having coffee in the morning and putting electronics together. Okay, so let's start by carefully removing this wrap. This is triggering me. I have to get this tone arm up off the plinth there. It looks like there was a well-intentioned plan to keep this safe and it just didn't pan out. Obviously this came from China, so it's been through a lot, probably Shipping containers, boxes, it may have been dropped, yada, yada, yada. Besides that though, it's actually packed very well. I feel like everything is very well protected. Look at that wood, you guys. That is just gorgeous. If I tilt it at an angle, you can really see the texture. Beautiful. Smells like new furniture. Wow, that is awesome. Look at that. We'll take a closer look in a minute. Okay, so there's the rest. And Yep, well-intentioned but poor performing uh, packing materials. There's the logo. And we'll look at all the components in due time, but first I really wanna get it put together. So let's tilt up a little bit here and then we're gonna go ahead and put on the horn, which <laughs> this is so cool. So obviously an original gramophone would use the horn as an acoustic means to amplify 
sound waves, you know, essentially bounce around, get bigger, 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 and louder and louder. But this is really a little speaker in there. And it's going, actually there's a circuit board in there. It's going to make contact with this circuit board right there. Let's take a closer look at that. So as you can see, it's just a point of contact. This is similar to the miniature gramophone we reviewed. So I'm wondering if there's a certain way. Oh, it's circular. So the two points of contact, if you look in there, see there's two points of contact. The reason why it's circular is that way it can rotate and be in any position and still make contact. Simple as that, you guys. That is so cool. Look at that. Oh, that is so cool. That is just awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and put the platter and belt together. Figure now is a good time to look at the accessories that come with it. We get a remote control, which is cool and ironic to have like an antique looking thing that comes with a remote control. We have the Lugu Lake um, literature user manual. Pretty simple. Little pamphlet. You can a cleaning cloth. I love it when they include extras like that. And an audio cable. So, oh, I was wondering where the belt was. <laughs> it's actually on the bladder on the outside edge of the bladder. Okay. I was a little worried there for a minute we didn't have a belt, but um, it's on the bladder. And I like the touches they've made, like, I mean, making it kind of look antique-ish. I like that. Even this, oh, there goes the belt. So now I drop it off, of course. Even the 45 adapter, we've seen these before, but it's kind of cool that they picked this one. It looks a little more antique. And then this little platter mat, it's kind of rubberized on the bottom with instructions, which is really neat. What a cool way to do it. If you ever forget, or if you resell it or whatever, you can just flip it over and then that person can understand how to use it. So obviously this is a small platter mat, but it should do the job for what we're trying to do here. So let's go ahead and put it together. Okay guys, so here is the plinth. Obviously this is wood or a very good wood veneer. I mean, that is, there's actually texture to that. That is a very nice veneer or wood. So I love that. And then obviously the metal part here, um, that we see. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach this, uh, hard to see from this angle, but this is packed full of grease, which is great. So we're just going to simply place the platter on there. Oh, it's, the bearings are nice. That's really good. So we're going to take the belt. I like the external. Some people don't like the external belt. I, th I think that's cool, but an external belt pulley, that's probably the exact same motor as like a suitcase player or an all in one. It looks like it from this angle anyway, but Hey, why not have it exposed? I think that's just cool. That adds to it. That's pretty much the setup for the plinth. You guys, I do want to rotate around here and show you the tone arm assembly, which is really cool. Uh, what, let's start off with the head shell. So the cartridge is going to be your typical Chuo Denshi clone, which I would expect to see. So it's a ceramic heavy duty cartridge. It's probably got a sapphire ruby tip. But I love the head shell, how they have it textured and they have this little angled lift, finger lift here. It just adds to the nostalgic look. Traveling up the tone arm, look how it's curved. I think that is so cool. So they've taken the essential basic components, but they've redesigned them in such a way. Here's the uh, cueing lever. Isn't that awesome? And it's dampened well. It's raising and lowering smoothly. And again, and the horn can be positioned in any angle you need it to. Um, that's just so cool. I love that. That is awesome. Okay, now we're going to take a tour around the outside. Uh, first of all, I find this hilarious. So <laughs> it's got sort of this classic old school compact disc logo. And they've even gone through the trouble of putting CD minus R compatible. And I find that hilarious because this thing doesn't have a CD player. <laughs> I think somebody looked at it and said, oh, digital audio, that looks good. And it does look good. I wish it had a CD player, but it doesn't. It just has that up there. In fact, the functions you can see are LP, Bluetooth, FM, and USB. So transport controls, input controls. Um, looks like we've got a stop and a speed control for the turntable and a volume button. The power is digital as are the volume controls. I believe, yep, the volume controls are digital as well because you need them to be digital if you have a remote. Otherwise the remote wouldn't work. Some super high end stuff will actually mechanically move a knob, but this is not gonna do that. It's got an aux input, so you can connect, you know, an actual CD player or your phone or device or whatever, and a USB to play MP3 files as well. I do not know if this records to USB. I do not believe so. But anyway, let's continue our tour around the perimeter here. We've got speakers on the sides. On the back, we've got a sealed and capped power connection FM antenna, the back of the horn, which again, I think that's really cool. 
another speaker on the side. Now I'm gonna take the horn off and then we're gonna look on the bottom because like its miniature predecessor, it's gonna have a nice speaker on the bottom for bass. So that's really good. These feet are rubberized, they seem to do a good job. So let's go ahead and power it up and give it a listen. Okay, so my initial impressions are I'm a little bit disappointed in the sound quality because I think I'm only getting sound out of this one speaker. I get a little bit out of the horn up here, uh, which is a tweeter, but this is coming out full blast. This speaker over here is not. So I feel like there's an issue. I'm disappointed in that regard because the miniature version of this that we reviewed had amazing sound quality and it was essentially the same device. Uh, just on a miniature form. It didn't play records, but it had the Bluetooth capability. So I'm not sure where the breakdown is there. I love the design. I love the physical build quality. I just, obviously that speaker not being connected is an issue. So let's go ahead and test the Bluetooth out next. I still can't get over this. Compact disc, digital audio, CDR compatible. <laughs> Why would they go through all the trouble of that? Warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages, tied up with strings. Okay, so interesting. The speakers all work fine and it sounds fantastic on Bluetooth. So the issue is the turntable or the needle or the cartridge or something therein, but this is fantastic. I wish I would have heard this first because the sound quality was phenomenal. I mean, all speakers are working. The bass is, you know, working very well from the bottom. Sounds great, which is a bummer that the turntable part isn't sounding as great. So let me try, uh, I have this Lady Gaga record, which is great for testing sort of modern music stuff. So let's try that one more time. And, uh, but I will say sound quality of Bluetooth, Amazing. Now let's try the radio while we're over here. So, so sounds good too. Sounds really, really good. Uh, you can also connect a direct line input and you can uh, do a USB for MP3s as well. By the way, you're hearing all this through the lapel mic, so you're not going to get the full effect, but you should be able to hear, you know, if it's basically good or not. I'm going to try this Lady Gaga record and see if all the speakers are working now. Maybe we need to reseat the cartridge or the stylus. There's a few things that could cause this issue. Only two speeds though. So we can do 33, which is there. Yes, this record is warped. It's not the platter. Platter actually looks like it's dead on, but this record is warped. Uh, and then 45 as well. So yeah, really bummed it doesn't have 78. This should, this should, yeah. this should totally have 78. So you can uh, play shellac, 78's on it. No, a micro groove stylus isn't gonna damage a 78 and vice versa. I don't believe that, doesn't make any sense. And um, it would be really cool. It would be really cool if it could do that. It would really add to the vintage effect. So we can't do that sound test I planned on. But let's see if at least all the speakers are gonna work. The descend on this thing is slow, <laughs> almost too slow. Here it goes. It's skipping because the when it, okay, so if your record's skipping, make sure you push down on the tone arm lift because sometimes they don't go down all the way. Okay guys, my final thoughts are this. The design is gorgeous. The physical hardware and the build quality seems very solid. I mean, the materials are wood, rubber, metal, and I just love it. There's very little plastic involved. There's a lot of metal parts and things just seem very well built. It sounds fantastic on Bluetooth mode. I'm sure the MP3 players is fine as well. Um, obviously the big downside is the turntable. If this had a magnetic cartridge and a preamp situation going on, we'd have a solid winner here. That being said, entry level and novelty players with ceramic cartridges like this, it's not entirely a bad thing. They are more rugged and they really get the job done when you're playing, you know, like thrift store records and 78s. It's actually more preferable to have a ceramic cartridge, but it would be great if the wiring was right because there's something somewhere goofy that is preventing all speakers working on the phonograph. 
which is a bummer because I think besides that, it's a home run. I would still recommend it because I think this is a one-off issue. It can't be a design flaw. Uh, I really don't think it's a design flaw. I think there's a wire loose somewhere. At least it's an amazing conversation piece. It has some functionality that you could really enjoy. Okay guys, that's gonna do it for today. If you wanna get your hands on this beauty, click on the link in the description below. But for now, happy record hunting. We'll catch you next time.